me ask you a quick question as we begin our program today. In order to go to a Walmart, a restaurant, fly in an airline without a face covering and all the social distancing, what would you be willing to give up? This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. There are two terms that get tossed around these days. One is getting back to normal and uh, a new normal. Which would you rather have? You already have companies like Ticketmaster, even Qantas Airlines out of Australia, talking in terms of some kind of a vaccination ID. And if you have this ID, hey, then you're no longer under some kind of a strange lockdown. Well, here's my question. Is this a temporary thing or is it permanent? My guest today is Dr. Timothy Gales, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Gales. And Timothy, do you think this is just a temporary move? No, it's not temporary. Um, this is the this is the future, and it's it's certainly not going to be limited to airplane flights. We're we're going to see that. We've already seen it mentioned that you would need the same thing in order to go to, um, you know, concerts and theater mm-hmm. and things like that. Now it's going to spread everywhere. And, and yeah, I think that was tic- I think that was Ticketmaster that was considering doing that for yeah. people wanting to go to a concert. That you mm-hmm. would, when the time comes, you'll have to prove that you have been vaccinated. Right. Absolutely. And it's going to come down all the way to your local Walmart and then your, you know, local uh, even gas station convenience store. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to require it. At least that's the plan from the writings of the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates and the the Gavi Foundation, because they believe that this is for our safety. Mm -hmm. But but, you know, I also want to look at the opposite end of that perspective. Uh, If the safety is having the vaccine and being allowed in the general population, then those who don't get it are considered what? Unsafe. Mm -hmm. So now that sets up a whole different perspective. What do you do with the unsafe people? I'll tell you what you do. You do what they want. What I'm looking at something out of Massachusetts where they mm-hmm. want to commandeer, you know, unused properties uh, to have holding places for those unsafe people, like a camp. Right. Uh, they want that in many places. As mm-hmm. a matter of fact, they've been talking about it with the yeah, with the businesses that no longer do you have to go to the office because you know people can work from home. What are you going to do with those businesses? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do with the stadiums that were actually given federal money? to private owned stadiums under the condition that if there's an emergency that the government can use those for whatever they need them absolutely so now we have stadiums that can also be holding places and let's let's call them what they are okay they're Uh going to be camps they're going to be camps with a concentration of people that's where we get the word concentration camp uh it doesn't mean it's gonna doesn't mean it's gonna be like the nazis (laughs) at least right or the russian gulag right but the concept is dangerous enough Mm-hmm. And when you have what we see going on out there with these these inflated numbers and these distortions and lies about deaths and PCR tests, mm-hmm. you know, what do you think is going to be done with these camps? Yeah, and we need. I want, I'm glad you mentioned PCR tests, and I've got something I want to share along with what you're talking about, like with Qantas Airlines and others that are looking at at ways of tracing and tracking. But, you know, with the PCR test and this, I, I try to get this through people's heads and they're, and they're missing this. And I know a lot of people would like to say, well, the, well, Bob, you're aren't you sharing some kind of fake news? I don't hear that on NBC or CBS or ABC. Well, of course you won't, because they have an agenda. They are so in the tank for oh Biden, as I call them, you know, the second coming of Obama. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's all it really is. It's just a it's a third term because he's a figurehead. He's he is nothing more than a figurehead. If anybody thinks that they elected a competent individual to go to the Oval Office, you've been deceived. The, why do you think he didn't campaign? Why do you think that he was finished for the day at nine thirty or ten o'clock in the morning because he was running out of coherent things to say? And how often? Have you seen on some places where the camera stayed rolling and he thoroughly just fell apart, 
But notice how so carefully ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, and CNN, they never showed you any of that. They edited that out because they didn't want you to see what they saw. Because if you did, you would never have voted for the guy. There were, that's why he never campaigned. And we'll talk about the election stuff in a little bit. But, but still, there's a guy who's a figurehead for other powers that be. And truth you know, be known, they wanted Kamala Harris to be the president of the United States, but she couldn't win on her own merits. So ride the coattails of the nice old grandpa guy that they created a myth about, put him out there, and then obviously cheated to get him elected. I mean, that's the only way I can put it. And I think more of that is coming out daily. We'll get into it at some other time. But getting back to your contact tracing and your certificate, you know, good old President Xi of, uh, of China is urging all the nations to adopt a contract tracing system that uses the QR codes to track travel during this pandemic. And according to the state-run news agency, they were saying at the G20 Leaders Summit that was held, I think, about a week or so ago, uh, Xi said that the world needs to harmonize policies and establish fast tracks to monitor COVID-19 transmissions. Now, how does that make you feel that, you know, this this is being pushed? I, I feel all sorts of cozy that Z really cares for our health the way he does. Mm-hmm. Um, not only that, he presides over one of the biggest human rights violation nations in the world, but he really cares about COVID. Oh, yeah. No, that's not the case. Uh, well, it, well I mean, it's, it's his baby. I mean, they, they worked yeah. on it in a lab. Look, yeah, I don't care right. what anybody says. It did not come from a bat 300 miles away from Wuhan. <laughs> it came out of a level for you know laboratory that deals with sure. viruses now whether it was an accident or whether intended i'll never know that's something that i am not privy to but we do have enough evidence this is so close to sars 2003 2004 and if you don't believe what i'm saying and you believe google you can even use google to find it type in sars cov 2003 2004 and you'll find a wealth of material about this quote novel virus of that time this virus is the same thing with just some gain of function for being more infectious that's the only difference well well here's the interesting part so you know china wants to look at this travel pass this system worldwide to have all nations kind of harmonized together in order to institute it Mm -hmm. doesn't that send a red flag up to anybody that they do not intend this to ever go away Mm -hmm. or something like it will keep coming back i mean look once you deceive people into this they'll believe the next thing you know the next mad cow disease to come along and need a vaccine for we, we can constantly be cycling the disease of the month club here. And I really believe in this country, the United States, where I'm at, and in Canada, and in parts of Europe and the UK, there are people that will buy it that the world has been changed by climate change. And that's why that's why all these pandemics. So they'll 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 blame climate change for all these morphing bacteria and morphing viruses people will believe it you know it and i know it right right well you know here look you have not only this travel pass system that these people are working in conjunction to institute look how fast they were developed actually they were developed before the pandemic even hit and that's what i want people to see not only that but we're also seeing what we call compliance units that are working in conjunction with police departments. I know Maryland is doing it right now. Mm -hmm. They're partnering with local officials, right, to to have what they call compliance units to enforce the virus rules, like wearing masks and things like that. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Compliance units are going to come around and enforce these rules. Does anybody, does the word tyranny ring a bell here? 
with anybody as we're starting to look at this? Well, look, look at look at some of the governors in the United States and their reaction. I mean, they're they're talking about trying to save lives. Good old. Good old uh, Andy Cuomo. You know, we did this. God didn't do this. We did it. We're going to make it happen. It's all up to me and tell you and you do what I tell you and everything will be fine. And that's his mm-hmm. mentality. You know, talk about China. You were, were mentioning how this you're, you're getting into this. China has introduced that QR based certificate earlier this year, and it stores the individual's travel and health history. Now, users are issued a color according to their potential COVID-19 exposure. Right. And and what that and which then decides that they should be quarantined or allowed out in the public. And the colors are like a traffic light. Green means you're good. Amber, you might have been near somebody and red, oh, you you're you're going to have to quarantine right now. I mean because, yeah. you know, so, so it's freedom. It's mm-hmm. it's a level of freedom. Let's not call it even even the the health pass. OK, it's what level of freedom are you allowed today? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it's yellow, amber, OK, then you're going to have some restrictions, but you'll have the ability maybe to go out and walk your dog. OK, if you have green, you're still not free like you were prior to covid. Mm -hmm. When you're green, you still will have limitations. This is all to set people up behaviorally and psychologically to have their freedom limited by the government under the guise of health issues Mm -hmm. um, for the rest of your life. It's not going away. And then we're going to use a smartphone is going to be the device that's, you know, the the way that will track. See, your smartphone knows where you are especially in a big city, uh, you've got GPS and you have triangulation of towers. And so you, you, you can know where a person is. And if somebody else with the same app who is a red person, ooh, this person has COVID, we just found out. And you were within less than six feet of that person for more than, oh, 60 seconds, then you're now code yellow you know you you follow Mm -hmm. and your phone will suddenly alert you you know act your code yellow act accordingly hurry home check in on what you need to do next i mean this is what it's coming down to if we let it happen yes and that's what we have to look at and look if you if you don't do what you're supposed to do the compliance units will make you do it they will come and force you to put on a mask, force you into your house quarantine, or take you out. So so we're there. We're watching these things be set up under the guise, again, of health and, and a pandemic. Safety. Health and safety. And we fall for it every time in history, your safety, right? And mm-hmm. that's what we're looking at right now on a worldwide level. But trust me, this is going to be more dictatorial and totalitarian than we have ever Mm -hmm. experienced in our lives ever you know here's one of the things that comes to mind you know i i get a lot of mail to this program and and i first i want to take a moment right now to thank everybody that is taking their time to write this program and you know some days i get nothing some days there's a couple of letters and some of the letters really move me i mean it humbles me some of the things you're you're saying about the program and also some of the concerns that you have. One thing I run into over and over again is are the people that their eyes have been open and they'll talk about family or some friend or a parent or a kid or whatever that, that thinks they're nuts because they believe some of the things that you and I are talking about. And, you know, they, they, they're buying the, the CNN version. They're buying the MSNBC version or ABC, NBC, CBS because they don't understand a couple of things. Number one, if these networks were so accurate, like, oh, I don't know, NBC and, and CNN, then they wouldn't be facing some of the lawsuits that they've lost or had to settle because of them giving misinformation and or slander. I mean, they're, they're trying to set an agenda. You know it, and I know it. And they're all about Mr. Biden. I saw a press conference you know, it's interesting when you see the highlights that are given on a TV show 
I don't care whether it's on Fox or America's One Network or Newsmax or CNN. The editing is amazing depending upon what you're trying to accomplish. I'm at a point in life that thankfully, because I'm semi-retired, I can make the time to, to watch some of these press conferences. And then I watch the reports and I'm just amazed at how intellectually bankrupt a lot of the media actually is. And that includes Fox from time to time of late, too. Hate to say mm-hmm. it. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's interesting, too, because so many of these news uh, programs here, no matter where they are in the world, they're getting the same script. That ought to concern people, too. Have you ever and, noticed and that, that they have this, what my wife calls it, the word of the day? Whatever mm-hmm. that word of the day is, and I'm trying to think of an example. I, there was a bunch last week that everybody in all the reports used identically the same <laughs> word and term. And it's like somebody put out a memo at 430 in the morning that today's talking points for all the TV shows is to call this that. And they all use that same exact word. If yeah. you think that... CBS is independent from ABC or NBC or CNN. You're crazy. They're they're all <laughs> they all report the same thing. They all believe they they're somehow going to be, especially if the Biden administration gets in office. They believe they will be among the elites in this world to be. You know, you you got to literally worship these people because they will tell you what to think. I mean, this is what it's come down to. It is, and it's it comes down to that. So your mainline TV and all these different networks are going to give to you the same propaganda. Uh, Edward Bernays in the 1920s wrote a book called Propaganda, and in that book he described this very thing, the psychology of democracies, and then that was before television, okay? Now we have television, which is probably the greatest propaganda tool in the history of mankind. Mm-hmm. Look at uh, the book 1984. I sure. mean, this is before TV became a, a thing. They're talking about the big screens and being observed. And they, they really, these e- elite or invisible people, okay, who create the scripts and propaganda, they rule over the masses. What they do is they shape your thoughts, your values, and citizen responses. Look at people who just watch the news. Now, I hate to tell you, but anybody I've talked to so far during this pandemic who's just watching news are frightened out of their minds at this virus Mm -hmm. because all you see are numbers all day long. And what numbers are they hearing? hearing. What numbers are they hearing? There's the question. Oh, by the way, in China, the the citizens that, you know, these apps, there's a little danger. Let me explain something. If you sign up for these smartphone apps, and a lot of you have already got them on your phones and don't even know it, you may want to double check. Um, When you sign up for that thing, And you're granting the software access to your personal data and a report, info, and location to police, if ever needed. In other words, if the police need to find you, they're going to find you off that information you voluntarily gave away, just so you know. Yep. You're giving them permission to, you know, there was a term once that says a man's home was his castle. Now his phone is. Mm -hmm. And everything in that phone, your personal information, your IDs, your your emails, your passwords, your bank accounts, your wallet, all these things that are on your phone, it's all accessible Mm -hmm. to them. Now there's no privacy. Your phone's your castle and you're giving it away. You give it away to people. So don't be surprised when all these things happen, Mm -hmm. uh, when they can track you, triangulate you, find out what you like, what you don't like, what you watch on YouTube, what you don't, what you order for Amazon, what you all your interests is are. It's an open book now. And all that's compiled. Every bit of it. So ne- next will be your health information, right? Mm-hmm. Your your vaccine record, all of that. So let's take that cell phone. The food, the foods you buy. Look, the foods you buy at a grocery store. I want you to think of two things. How many how many grocery stores require you nowadays to have their little club card or whatever you want to call it to get a discount? Right. You've seen those things. Uh, Kroger's got a card. There's a chain here in Georgia that has one. Publix, ironically, does not, which is why one of the reasons I like shopping there. But 
they, they, with that card, these grocers are tracking everything you buy. And they know your favorite products because you keep coming and buying the same stuff. They're tracking that. And then occasionally you will get coupons for a competing brand because you're being targeted based upon your buying habits. And what they do is they inflate the price of the groceries, then give you a discount to use that phony card, all in an effort to get your information about your shopping habits so they can better target advertising to you. So I had a friend of mine recently. I was talking to him. He came into work and he said, I'm a little freaked out right now. And I said, why? He goes, well, on my way to work, I had a craving for a Kit Kat bar. So I stopped over at the store and I picked up a Kit Kat bar and I ate it in my car as I came to work. He said, I just looked down at my phone and I'm getting Kit Kat bar ads Mm -hmm. on my phone. He goes, that's really scaring me. Yeah. Listen, this this is out there. What you do, it already registers mm-hmm. right away. So you're correct in what you buy, what your habits are, what you like. Um, all of this is, is out there and is easily accessible. Mm-hmm. So if it's accessible, can it be used to control? Of course. Of course. Absolutely. I mean, stop and think. Anybody with a smartphone... That, that's listening. This has probably happened to you before. And I'm aware that there's all this listening going on. I mean, I get it. I don't worry about it because I'm not saying anything in front of a device anyway that I would be afraid to say in front of anybody in public or, you know, on TV myself. I'm not going to say anything. But you're right about one thing. You start talking to, you know, your spouse about... You know, I think we need to consider getting a new heating system or something like that or getting it repaired. And the next thing you know, when you go to Facebook, um, you're going to start finding a bunch of ads for heating and air conditioning services. Just it's amazing how your Google is you Google is using what you say in your room because somewhere in some app that you couldn't wait to get your hot little hands on. And there are a lot of apps out there. I'm careful about the ones that I that I get. I'm very careful because there are a lot of these wonderful apps and you you, you ask yourself, how can they develop that and give that away for free? And there's no advertising on it. How how do they do it? If you look at the, you know, the permissions you're granting to the app, you're granting, you know, your geolocation, where you're located, You're, you're giving them information about who you are that you have stored in your phone. You're giving them access to your camera and access to your microphone. And they can use, you know, artificial intelligence to pick out certain words in your conversation so they can market things to you, like a new car or I need tires. It's amazing. You start talking tires uh, to somebody and, and by the next morning, you've got advertising coming in on email and everywhere else about tires. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it really is. Uh, so all of this is connected. All of it's integrated. All of it is coming together in AI. And it's also going to be, as we said, with your health records. Mm-hmm. Um, these things will be known now just walking into a store. Mm-hmm. It's not only going to know you had the vaccine. The store will know everything it needs to know about you mm-hmm. as a person immediately. Mm-hmm. And can access that. Every police officer, every police car will be able to access that right away. They even have helmets that uh, down in Maryland that the, they give to the police already, which will have that kind of like that infrared, right, that will read the mm-hmm. tattoo or the vaccine on you or your phone, whatever it may be. They're going to be able to see that right away in their helmet, something out of a sci-fi movie, where they're going to see all your information, who you are, your mm-hmm. habits, even to the point where Klaus Schwab in the in the Davos Institute is talking about uh, nanodust, where they're hoping they'll be able to read your thoughts mm-hmm. going forward. Period. Yeah, one of the companies that has come out with the, some of this tracking stuff is uh, Microsoft. They have one that is called Coco, which is a contact confirming application, and they rolled it out in China. And uh, according to Reuters, right in the beginning of summer, four million people downloaded and installed it on their phones. 
I mean, just as quick as they could get it. And and here's how it works. If the, if the individual should test positive for the coronavirus, a Bluetooth signal will detect any prior contact with nearby users that lasted more than 15 minutes and notify those people. In other words, you didn't know it, but when you were over there at the Wally World Walmart and you were over there by, you know, by the TVs and you were looking for about 10 or 15 minutes, you were, you were just a matter of 10 feet away from a guy that just tested positive for COVID. You need to now go on Amber Alert because you never know. You, you see where this is headed. Yep, absolutely. It is headed to a complete restriction and knowledge of every movement and every mm-hmm. thought you ever take. That's right. Now, who's going to control that? And then, if you remember back in the the eighties, Francis Schaeffer, he always oh, yes. used to say, he always used to say, "Who's going to control the controllers?" Mm-hmm. Well, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly not you and I. That's the problem. Right. I thought we were our own controllers in the sense that God has made us autonomous, that we are created in his image and likeness. And as as such, we are free beings. We have a free will. We have a free movement of action. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to in this life uh, unless we're imprisoned, which is exactly what they're doing now. They want to take that away and control. They want to merge man with machine and transhumanism with AI. And they want to be able to control everyone and everything. You got it. you and I both know, money is not enough. Mm -hmm. When you have trillions of dollars, money means nothing to you. That's right. That's right. You know, the greatest aphrodisiac after that is power. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's what they want. That's what they want. Listen, we got a break coming up here at the bottom of the... Of the hour, more or less, I want to remind you, you're listening to the program, Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. My guest today, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Gales, a regular. Try to get him on once or twice a week at least. And uh, we've mentioned it before. Everything you hear us talk about, we don't just pull it off, quote, the Internet. You know, there's a lot of people that believe anything you find on the Internet is true. It isn't. There's a lot of fake news there, too. If you take the time... And you dig deeper, like an onion. You keep peeling back layer after layer. Eventually, you'll find out if there's something there or not. And it's not easy. It's not easy to get information. But I've had a background in my life working in news many, many years ago. So I've learned to to ask more than the superficial question. And I've learned don't always take the first answer given as shall we say, gospel or truth. Oftentimes, it is not. And so when we come on this program, I'm not giving you some conspiracy theory, some weirded out knowledge, and most important, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I mean, I, I don't have a warehouse full of coronavirus cures. I don't have a warehouse full of generators or books or DVDs or what have you or food that lasts for 50 years. I don't I don't sell anything. And and it's not what I do. I mean, I have friends that uh, can talk to you about precious metals and that's fine. I've done that myself. But what I'm trying to tell you is the reason I do this program and I'm I don't know how to make it any more clear. I just felt very led to do this, to help the body of Christ in these very strange and difficult times. We are living in an age unprecedented, nothing that anybody could have ever dreamed except in the book 1984, perhaps, and even that seemed like really far-fetched, and only if you were living in East Germany or something of that nature. We never would, we never could even envision something of that magnitude working its way across Europe, the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, the United States, South America, too. We never envision anything like this. And so I just felt very led to get on the radio and start talking to you about the world as I'm seeing it. And I know many of you are seeing the same things, and it's probably nice to know you're not alone. And that's a lot of what this radio program is about. You're not alone when you're doubting the narrative. Uh, We've seen throughout history 
how a narrative can oftentimes be terribly, 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 terribly distorted. And that's why we do this program, Truth to Ponder. Any income the program derives is used strictly to buy airtime. Um, I, I am retired. God is taking care of my personal needs. And so I'm not asking you to support me. Uh, even though the workman is worth his wage, I'm not asking for that. I'm just asking that this program can expand and reach more people that need to be reached. And you can contact us through the website, which is Truth the number two ponder.com truth the number two ponder.com if you feel led to give something large or small you can do it from the website you can go to paypal we'll get it that way as until paypal decides they don't like me or something we'll we'll enjoy the usage of it and uh, if you want to mail something you can do it as well we are truth to ponder and actually the technically the the real name of the of the organization, and I'll explain it when we get back after the break, is Ancient Word Radio. Ancient Word Radio. And uh, you can write us at 21 Berkshire Lane, B-E-R-K-S-H-I-R-E, 21 Berkshire Lane. Add the number 263. That's our little P.O. box. They require us to put that on, on the little envelope there, so it makes it easier for the gal that runs the tiny post office to put them in the right box. You think with a post office that small would be on a first name basis, but. And the city is Sky Valley, two words, Sky Valley, Georgia, 30537. We'll give the address before the end of the program today. This is Truth to Ponder, and we shall be right back after this break. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of the Monday edition of Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. Once again, I mentioned on the first half of the program, a lot of people have been writing letters, some asking questions, others just sharing some thoughts and ideas. And I I want you to know that I appreciate everything you tell me and share with me. I take it to heart. A lot of you will probably, if you haven't gotten it already, you might be getting a letter from me if you had shared something with me. Uh, There are some letters that I get where I know that I shouldn't reply back because I don't want to cause any conflicts uh, with with family or whatever the case may be. So I don't, just just so you know, I try to use what I call godly discretion in all that I do on this program. As I said, this program is all about sharing some truth with you, some factual information, nothing hyped, nothing to make you do things you shouldn't be doing. And we we talk about things like the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, you know, when it comes to the coronavirus. And I need to preface this in my in my work. For many, many years, you know, besides being in ministry and broadcast, there was a time after the passing of my first wife, I made a career change for a while. What started out as just a, you know, media manager and public information officer job grew into something I never would anticipate. And it's funny, I need the skill today, emergency management. And so I I was trained and cross-trained and learned planning and all the stuff that goes with planning for disasters, including a pandemic. And so I got called out of retirement early this year to go to another state and help out their effort because of my background. And the reason I challenge a lot of what I see is because of what I saw on the front line day in and day out. I dealt with a medical, you know, the health director, wonderful doctor could be at any hospital or university teaching center in the world with her credentials but the reason she was in that town is because she liked that area and had family and that was more important to her but she was one of those that started looking at these oddball numbers of people dying and did a little bit of you know investigating and found out that 25 percent 30 percent that she could track down They never died of or really with COVID, but they showed symptoms of COVID. And and that's one of the misnomers in this entire thing. We got a memo 
and everybody in you know in emergency management, health departments, coroners, all were told that effective earlier this year, back on April the 4th, the CDC would no longer be counting anybody's flu death. They were just done for the year, April the 4th. But if some if somebody had a fever or somebody had upper respiratory issues and they had a list of about 20 other things, you know, get one or two of those symptoms, you are welcome to call it COVID-19, even without testing. And just so you know, many that were listed as dying of COVID-19 were never tested, but the numbers went up. My guest today on the program is the Reverend Dr. Timothy Gales, like me, a seeker of truth. Uh, We do the best that we can to dig beneath the headlines and the surface and try to give you some, some information. And so welcome back, Timothy. Well, good to be here, Bob. Um, you're exactly right with those numbers, and it's scary. And and the more you see the inflated aspect of these numbers, the more you desire to let people know, mm-hmm. keep them aware. Uh, but the TV is a powerful, powerful oh, yes. tool. Let's go back to March. I'm glad you mentioned that. Do you remember what CBS pulled um, on TV? They were they they had this little bit of a video snippet from some little hospital in uh, northern Italy in a community of a lot of older people that when COVID-19 hit, they were just unprepared, didn't know what they were dealing with, and they were flat out overwhelmed. So you have this video of this of this hospital in chaos, and CBS tried to pawn it off like it was a hospital in New York. Remember that? Yep, yep. And it was actually a little hospital you know, it's like it's like the Hooterville General Hospital when it comes to where they were at. And, of course, a lot of smaller hospitals get overwhelmed easily. Matter of fact, speaking of overwhelmed hospitals, you're going to love this. Let's go north of the United States border to our neighbor to the north, Canada. And I'm reading a story about their concerns about the COVID virus and the number of people that are going into the hospital, you know, and then and they're, they're, they're getting to the point that if it gets any worse because, you know, they've got a number of people, uh, maybe about, you know, eight, you know, five or five percent having COVID-19, but that may push them over the edge and they're going to have to start canceling uh, elective surgeries. Now, what's that tell you? And then I'm going to give you a little bit of background that I picked up on. Well, you know. It tells me, number one, that these people, people actually are dying from not being able to have these surgeries, from from being withheld from cancer clinics and other mm-hmm. things. And anybody who does die in the hospital now, no matter what it is, becomes a COVID case. If they can now, call it, if they can find any one of the symptoms. Absolutely. And they're told, they're told even if it's probable if they just look at a person and think it's probable they died from COVID, they can list it as COVID. Mm-hmm. No other scientific fact other than, well, he was coughing before he died. You know, it must have been. It was yeah, COVID. had a 99.5 fever or something. You know, right, and right. It, it and, literally, and so it's horrifying. All right, let, let me give you one case, and I, I can't tell you too much about it, but I'll say this much. One of the first cases that our health director in the county I served was fighting was a person that the hospital declared died of COVID-19. Okay. The health director saw the name and goes, I know who that person is. I know the person quite well. Person is 83, I think, um, had lost his wife about 25 years earlier at a younger age and had a, he was a heavy smoker, smoked four packs of cigarettes a day. Four packs, I mean, of the cheap stuff. I mean, he just lit one off the other after the other after the other. And in his depression, had become a total alcoholic. I mean, absolutely didn't eat, destroying his liver, alcoholic. And he ended up in the hospital with pneumonia symptoms. You know, the VA hospital. And the VA hospital was having enough trouble at that time at the beginning of the virus where they're trying to scale back uh, to take care of what could be. So they just assume this person is COVID, sent him off to a regular hospital to die where they had a hospice room, and he died. And so he was called a COVID death. Well, 
how do you how do you call somebody eighty three heavy smoker alcoholic uh, who's been in and out of the VA hospital seven times in that year with heart issues and everything else? Magically, he died of COVID. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. the The numbers are so um, skewed in different ways. Okay, that even today, well, let's face it, it's not just you and I saying this. There's over fifty two thousand doctors and scientists have signed what they call the Great Barrington Declaration, mm-hmm. saying that this has been detrimental not only physically but mentally mm-hmm. to millions upon millions of people who are locked down and who go to these hospitals and and they're being told that they're dying of covid and and or that they did die of covid listen Everything from social isolation, misery, uh, wrong diagnosing, all of these things are going on so much so tens of thousands of doctors and scientists are complaining. You Mm -hmm. don't hear this on the news, do you? No, not at all. Because, see, that's not the narrative. Because, see, that narrative would not have worked in the recent election. It doesn't work in keeping people under control and in in fear. It, It doesn't work for the the new world order that's trying to work its way in globally and this is a global pandemic in an attempt to make differences in a global you know form i mean that's all i can tell you sure we look at these numbers you were talking you know there's a case demic going on yep. and, and we need let's go to the pcr test and i'm trying to remember the guy you may remember it if you don't don't feel bad the guy that invented the PCR test is the polychain reaction test that is currently being used to evaluate COVID-19. This guy was an absolute genius. I mean, that let's he, he passed away, what, about two Gary years Mullis. ago? Gary Mullis. Yeah, he passed away, what, two years ago? Something along that line? Well, actually, he passed away roughly August of 2019. Interestingly, about six months before the virus hit. Hmm, strange, but yeah. we'll just leave that. We'll just let that sit out there for you to decide. I'm not going to comment, mm-hmm. but he was a genius. But he he talked about there were two things he said about that test, and when he when he came up with this idea, it was never designed to be a diagnostic test to say you've got a disease. It was to look for the tracing of a disease, because what it does, I want you to imagine. Maybe you did this exercise. Everybody, I think, back in my generation was told to, what would you rather have, a million dollars or double a penny for a month? You you remember that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you find out that doubling a penny for a month, you get get way more than a million. I mean, it gets into mega millions pretty quick. Well, what what the PCR test is, is basically you take some viral material, that's the best way to describe it, or residue, or come up with a name, just debris. And right, then it, right. then it, this, this test will multiply that. It doubles it on the first go-round. Then it doubles it again. So one becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes 16, becomes 32, becomes 64. And by the end of the first seven cycles, you know, you're, you're up to 100 times more. But, they, but he said when the test gets beyond 24 cycles like that, the the answers be, can become nonsense is pretty much what he what he said. It could become, you know, a fool's game because it's not going to mean anything at that point. If you're starting to see a virus, then it's meaningless after 24 because you may be looking at the rem, the remnants of the common cold being amplified and amplified and amplified. Well, 24 is the magic number to, to stop at. Where do you think the average? number is stopping at today on most of the tests that people are getting probably close to 40 (laughs) it is actually 37 is the average there you go and and the, the problem is he said when you get past 24 just garbage can suddenly appear to be covid and you can get what they're getting now a tremendous amount of false positives. They love to run around and say, oh, those are just asymptomatic people. They're asymptomatic, but they're contagious. you got to watch out for them asymptomatic people because they're going to get everybody, they're all going to die of corona because they're asymptomatic, they're positive. If you got it and you, you hang around with them, 
What's the TV telling a lot of people? And they live in fear. And these are people that should know better from their faith. They, they fear the virus more than God. I'm telling you, they fear this virus. And so they've got this, this narrative that of asymptomatic, yet study after study comes out, and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, they, they get wind of that, man, they shut you down. They don't want you to know that there are more studies coming out that perhaps asymptomatic people don't spread it because maybe they don't even have it. They're just a false positive. That's right. And the false positive rates are very high. Um, you know, there there is actually a video with Carrie Mullis saying in his own words that this was not designed to diagnose uh, a disease per no. se. And yet, if you look up Carrie Mullis right now on Google, there will be 20 or more fact check sites saying he never said that. Mm-hmm. When there's when there's a video video out there of him saying of that him, exact thing, him saying it, yes. So the fact checkers are there to destroy those who are trying to show you the narrative is wrong, and they are there to cast doubt and aspersions against them. This is what we find everywhere. You find it on Facebook. You find it on Twitter. You find it all over the place. So my question is, if this is such a horrible disease and experts and scientists and medical doctors are all working on it in honesty and truth, trying to deal with this pandemic, why has disinformation and those who are being censored risen so sharply? Mm-hmm. That should be another red flag to I know. everybody. It's amazing. We but saw. it's kind of a cognitive dissonance, right? It is. So I tell you, I tell you, Bob, the PCR tests don't work. And then I tell you, but they do pick up everything we want them to. Mm-hmm. Those are two contradictory things, and you're sitting there going, uh, you, you eventually choose one to believe, and that's that. If I'm not mistaken, and I'm going to double-check myself, but I'm pretty certain that over time, as they have, these tests have been modified, changed, improved, or whatever, since they first started giving those tests in March. And in March, you know, we had X number of positives. A lot of people, well, number one, we restricted the test to begin with to only those that had symptoms and looked really sick. In the county we were in, we only had a very limited supply of these of these tests, as you can imagine. It was new, and they hadn't had a chance to produce them. So we had this screening process for the drive-in, you know, testing sites. You got to the first person to double-check, and they checked your temperature and, and, and try to get a list of your symptoms. And they would decide right then, if you had nothing to show that you exited, you know, they had a way to get you to exit out of the parking lot, you're not taking the test. Then it went to the next level, which is somebody like a PA that would then go a little bit deeper if there was some symptoms. If they couldn't chalk them off to something legit like the flu, uh, you could take the test then. Otherwise, they kicked you out of line and you went home. So by the time somebody actually got to where the nose swabbers were waiting for you with their face shields, gloves and goggles and, and, and you know, breathing mask and everything else, they, the odds of that person having, quote, COVID-19 were pretty high because you had screened out everybody else that couldn't have had it. And so 100% of the tests are be, being given to those that are probably based on observation. Now, remember this really carefully because this goes back to something we talked about a little bit earlier about how the hospitals could assume somebody died of covid And so here we are, we've got all these people that are showing the symptoms of no taste, no smell, uh, upper respiratory infection, uh, a fever, uh, stomach issues. There's like, what, about 20 different symptoms. And if you had two or three of those, then you got to the nose swabbers. Okay, you following so far? Mm -hmm. All right, even then. Even then, when you think you've you've narrowed it down to the 100% they got at COVID group, only 30% had it. Right. Now, th- and that's back when the test was more legit, too. Sure. So we have a test that's, you know, multiplying 24, 25, 26 times. And we're coming back 
with positive in about 30 to 40 percent of the cases that we have screened to make sure they're on death's door before we swab their nose because we didn't have enough tests. Right. But then everybody started getting tested. Then we had the first decline, which is because of natural circumstances. We've been locked down. Then we then it peaked when we finally got out of our lockdowns. It went back up again, then went down. Then the weather changed. We're back indoors. It goes back up, supposedly. And, and my question is to you, and I, I'm not going to reveal what you do, but um, where did the flu season go? That's right. Pretty much gone, right? We've cured the flu. All mm-hmm. right. Uh, the flu, as well as many other things. Because everything, the, the PCR test was really to look at sequences in DNA, okay, particular mm-hmm. sequences, the polymerase enzyme. It's to look at the, the, PC, the uh, sequences in DNA. It's not to diagnose uh, a virus. As a matter of fact, the guy who invented it had his own theories about HIV and AIDS and those viruses that, you know, we won't go into right now. But he had some big questions about those, where mm-hmm. they came from, what happened. Um, so I would venture to say if he was still alive, he would have some big questions about what they're using his test for. Uh, but, yes, these these diseases, these viruses, the flu, the sicknesses, the bronchitis, all of those things have taken steep decline both last season with this and now this season. And everything's being called covid with the case numbers. And that just instills the fear, as we told, as we said before, and it it's continuing to paralyze people. So as these draconian laws are being put in all around the world, mind you, as they're being put in as an authoritarianism with the governors and those above them are overriding democratic Mm -hmm. ways of putting in law. Nobody's saying anything. That's right. Because it's for our good. It's for our safety. Because, yes, you know, government has always proven to be benevolent, right? Mm hmm. No. And that's the problem. That's what we, now, what, what we believe our government's going to be benevolent. We would like to believe that. But, Bob, we live in this world, right, where everybody we believe is basically good. Mm-hmm. And what I always say to people is you don't really believe that. I mean, do you have a car alarm? Do you do you lock your front door at night? When you go to the bank, is there a big plexiglass between you and the and the the person there? I mean, is that for the one or two bad people out there? Mm-hmm. It's no. People are not basically good. We have good in us. But if I were to turn around and and agree with BLM and Antifa, and I were to say tomorrow, let's say the state of Pennsylvania, all police are on vacation for one day. <laughs> Will we see the natural goodness of man overflow? Oh, it just, it, it'd be just like Minnesota discovered after you defund the police. Exactly. What, what, do you, what do you mean crime went up? Nature. What, what do you mean crime went up? How could that happen? Exactly. Exactly. That's the basic nature of man. We have laws to curtail that. All right. And and these are the things that we, we're seeing. It's, it's kind of this. We've been brainwashed, honestly, into thinking people are basically good because we have laws, we have a civil society, and we think that's the norm. We got about 30 seconds here. I want to just quickly, you know, it goes back to what I call the the new world religion, which will take a bit of Christianity and other things where all good dogs go to heaven. If you just are a nice citizen, believe in BLM and are good to your neighbor, everything works out. Is that is that where the new world religion is heading us? It certainly is. It certainly is. Uh, even the Pope just came out. Uh, who was it? Scalfari, his friend, just came out and said, Pope's goal is a one world religion. Everyone can get together and, and play nice in the sandbox. I can see our time's about to run out for today's program. And I'm going to ask you to come back tomorrow. I want to finish up right where we're leaving off here as we've talked about the new normal What about this new world religion? Is that something that we need to be concerned about? We'll get into that topic tomorrow. I want to thank the number of people that have taken the time to to encourage me and let me know that you're listening to this program. And you can go to our website, which is truth2ponder.com, truth2ponder.com. 
You can find my email that gets directly to me, which actually is is Bob at truth the number two ponder dot com. Let me know how you're listening. Podcast uh, on short wave frequency and time. If you do that, means a lot to me as I as I look toward the future of this program as we continue to do the things that God has called us to do. Our mailing address, by the way, and, and a lot of you have been financially supporting us, which all goes to cover shortwave airtime, just so you know. And you can actually make a small contribution online if you'd like, or you can use our mailing address, which is 21 Berkshire Lane, 21 Berkshire Lane, number 263. That's number 263 in Sky Valley, Georgia, 30537. If you're using a check, you can make it out to Ancient Word Radio. That is our, that's my parent ministry that, that kind of oversees what I'm doing. That's my ministry that I've put together. We'll talk about that later this week. And so those that would like to help, you can just make it out to Ancient Word Radio. And I'd appreciate that. Once again, 21 Berkshire Lane, number 263 in Sky Valley, Georgia, and the zip code 30537. We'll pick up our conversation with Dr. Timothy Gales tomorrow here in the program. But until then, may God richly bless you. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder. Shining the light of truth in a darkening world.